Security Level 1 Item Number SCP-6180 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures With the exception of particularly well-observed contact offense, SCP-6180 presents only a low-level threat to Foundation secrecy. Most contact offense may be explained by temporary psychosis, but witnesses and participants may be administered Class B amnestics at the discretion of Project Director Okafor. Foundation personnel with clearance level 3 or higher are automatically approved for Protocol Foxtrot 44. A description of Protocol Foxtrot 44 is included in Addenda 6180B1. Foundation employees lower than level 3 may apply for Protocol Foxtrot 44 a maximum of once every three months. Priority is to be given to personnel with clearance level 2 or mobile task force operatives who work in crowded public spaces. Implementation of Protocol Foxtrot 24 is to be performed by MTF Z12 C Cumulicers. Description SCP-6180 is an anomalous connection between otherwise unrelated individuals associated with the human appendix. In almost update every note, see addendum 6180H1. Human being, the DNA present in all cells of the appendix is inconsistent with DNA in the rest of the body. Instead, Genes in all appendix cells are an exact match for another individual somewhere on Earth. This relationship is always reciprocal. That is, if the DNA in person A's appendix is a match for person B, the DNA in person B's appendix will likewise always match that of person A. The SCP-6180 mediated relationship between humans who contain one another's appendicial DNA are known as SCP-6180 antagonists, or simply antagonists. There is no demographic pattern except that of age that determines which humans are antagonists of each other. An individual's antagonist is completely random with respect to sex, race, location of birth, ethnicity, or any other mental or physical attributes. However, all antagonists are born within three months of each other. It is currently theorized that the SCP-6180 connection is formed between embryos of 10 to 85 days post-fertilization. Notably, this usually precedes the development of the appendix. One of the most notable anomalous effects of SCP-6180 is the inverse correlation of life events involving success and levels of happiness between two antagonists. If an individual achieves some major personal or professional accomplishment, their antagonist has a 32% chance of suffering a personal or professional failure of a roughly similar nature within five days. Conversely, if an individual has a major personal, economic, or emotional setback, their antagonist will have a 36% chance of experiencing an inaugural success or positive event within a five-day time frame. Measures of professional achievements are relative to local, social, and economic conditions. For example, a poor farmer doubling their income due to a good harvest, and a wealthy investment banker doubling their salary would have approximately equal effect on their antagonist. Examples of correlated life history events connected to SCP-6180. Trigger. Zhong Wen, 23-year-old male living in Incheon Republic of Korea, becomes engaged to his romantic partner. Effect on antagonist. Rajni Banaji, 23-year-old female living in Kogbo, India, becomes depressed after her long-term romantic partner unexpectedly leaves her for another person. Khan Nozir, 33-year-old male living in Istanbul, Turkey, loses 450 liras on the stock market in one day. Victoria Ruiz, 
33-year-old male living in San Carlos de Bolivar, Argentina, is offered a chance to invest in a friend's taxi business that will become successful, eventually making rares enough money to buy three more acres of land. Chen Lu, 41-year-old female living in Xi'an, China, receives a promotion at a workplace and purchases a more expensive apartment. Lu Qiang, 40-year-old female living in Shenzhen, China, is dismissed from a job for full performance and is compelled to move back in with family. Sade Odekobami, 18-year-old female living in Okaho, Nigeria, is awarded a full four-year scholarship to the University of Lagos. Luke Elric, 18-year-old male living in Carson City, United States, is sentenced to four years in prison for selling methamphetamine in unexpectedly long sentence for a first-time offender. Lisa Gillard, 61-year-old female living in Hamilton, New Zealand, accidentally kills her dog, in which she was mostly emotionally attached by running it over with her car. Thiago Montes, 61-year-old male living in Campinas, Brazil, learns his daughter and her family were removing back to Campinas from distant Fortaleza and becomes significantly more elevated in mood. Fatima Manan, five-year-old female living in Robert, Morocco, is given to the care of a foster family who treats her with kindness and will eventually formally adopt her. Anatoly Kazova, six-year-old male living in Krasnorsk, Russia, rapidly begins to show neurological symptoms and is diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Contact offense. When two antagonists come into close proximity and make visual contact with each other, they invariably begin to display anomalous behavior, indicating SCP-6180 has a cognitive hazardous element. These interactions have been termed SCP-6180 contact offense. Due to the large and globally dispersed human population, contact offense are very uncommon. Estimated at 100 to 150 instances per year, and because of their isolated and psychological nature, rarely present a threat of being perceived as anomalous. A large majority of contact offense can be sufficiently explained to the public as temporary psychosis or drug use, amnestization of participants and witnesses formed at the discretion of Project Director Octafor are only required for an average of 23% of contact offense per year. Antagonist behavior in contact offense is dependent on the individual subtype of SCP-6180. There are three known subtypes designated SCP-6181 to SCP-6183. Pairs of antagonists will invariably display the same subtype, with no observed instances of cross-subtype pairs. Subtype SCP-6181 SCP-6181 individuals are by a large margin the most common, with an estimated 92% of the human population being of this subtype. Contact events between SCP-6181 individuals adheres to the following pattern without exception. If two SCP-6181 antagonists are within a distance of approximately 145 meters of each other and make direct visual contact, they will cease whatever activity they have been performing and begin walking towards each other at a steady and deliberate pace while maintaining eye contact. Individuals cannot be dissuaded from this course of action. However, if they see a knife or other sharp object and can easily acquire it without significantly deviating from the path and without breaking eye contact, they will do so. At 73 meters from each other, antagonists will begin to walk more quickly and verbalize direct insults or threats at each other as they approach. There is no discernible pan to these vocalizations beyond their intense negativity and aggression. After antagonists were within 35 meters, 
They will cease verbal communication and start making a grunting and gurgling noise, often described by observers as animalistic. They cease walking and begin to run at each other. However, their movements become unsteady and erratic. Often they will fall and continue to approach each other while rapidly crawling on all four limbs. Individuals will then attempt to physically incapacitate their antagonist before removing and consuming their antagonist's appendix. If individuals have acquired a sharp object, they will use it to remove the appendix. But in the large majority of the cases, they are unarmed and will extract the appendix with only fingernails and teeth. Antagonists do not display enormous speed or strengths as they fight, but will continue to do so until they successfully consume the appendix or expire from either wounds or exhaustion. Notably, individuals with no medical education are able to precisely locate the appendix location within the body. If antagonists are physically separated and removed from each other's presence, they will remain aggressive for a period of two to three hours before returning to normal with no memory of unusual behavior or effects. Subtype SCP-6182 Subtype SCP-6182 is significantly less common than SCP-6181, comprising 4.5% of the global population. Prediction of SCP-6182 subtype presence is not exact without observing a contact event, but SCP-6182 individuals usually display high intelligence, low empathy, and are often diagnosed with borderline personality disorder or sociopathy. Unlike SCP-6181 contact events, which require direct eye contact from both antagonists, SCP-6182 behavior can manifest even with only one antagonist see the other from any distance. SCP-6182 individuals do not display the aggressive animalistic behavior of most contact events and instead will begin to follow and track their antagonist in a patient, predatory manner. They will sometimes follow their antagonist to their place of residence, but will other times surreptitiously photograph or otherwise investigate the antagonist for a period of multiple days. While consciously not displaying unusual behavior to friends, family, or co-workers, they will also immediately make attempts to acquire weapons. After significantly preparing individuals to kill the antagonist with as few witnesses as possible before cutting out and consuming the appendix. If two SCP-6182 antagonists see each other, this will usually result in a situation where both try to outsmart and outmaneuver one another. For this reason, SCP-6182 contact events have on occasion lasted over 30 days before one antagonist successfully terminates the other. Subtype SCP-6183 Approximately 3.5% of the human population does not have an antagonist, and their epidemical DNA matches the rest of their body. Consequently, no contact event is possible. Documentation updated on November 10th, 2016. See Addendum 6180H1. Contact events of both subtype SCP-6181 and SCP-6182 have been observed in individuals as young as 5 and as old as 98 years of age. An individual will not attack their antagonist if their antagonist's appendix have been previously removed. The four Foundation employees with clearance level 3 or higher are strongly encouraged to receive appendectomies. Notably, exposing an individual to video footage or photographs of their antagonist will yield a minor cognitive hazardous reaction in which they will profess an inexplicable and profound dislike of the pictured person. Addendum 6180A1 Benefits of SCP-6180 In individual anomaly gains a number of mental and emotional benefits from consuming the antagonist's appendix. Selected effects are listed below. Gain of 
18 to 21 percent on foundation standard tests of mental ability and problem solving aptitude. 30 to 43 percent improvement in foundation cognitive resistance assay FCA scores. Average of 22 percent improvement in Tomorrow 2 test of memory and rapid learning. Advancement of one letter grade on the mere solo fee Caruso Emotional Intelligence Test, MSC EIT. This effect is not observed in SCP-182 individuals. 18% average increase in blood serotonin levels, immediate and complete return to emotional and mental health in 73% of individuals with depression, bipolar disorder, or obsessive compulsive disorder. Notably, if an individual's antagonist speaks a certain language or is proficient in playing a musical instrument, after consuming their appendix, the individual will learn that language or instrument approximately three times more quickly. With these in mind, the Foundation has developed Protocol Fox 1224 to further the research, espionage, and containment capabilities of selected Foundation staff. Addendum 6180B1 Description of Protocol Fox 1244 Protocol Fox 1244 is to be performed by members of MTF Z12 and entails surreptitiously acquiring the appendix of the approved Foundation employee's antagonist. Once an employee gains Fox 1244 approval from the acting SCP-6180 project director, See Special Containment Procedures, a biopsy of the appendix is taken, and a sample of its DNA sequence. Using scp beep, MTF Z12 is able to quickly identify and precisely locate the Foundation employee's antagonist anywhere on Earth. A small sub-task force is then deployed to acquire the appendix. The most common way of obtaining the appendix is to utilize anomalous item number beep to induce a continuous piercing pain in the lower right abdomen. This pain is uniquely characteristic of appendicitis, and in the vast majority of cases, the subject will present to a medical professional who will almost always decide to form an appendectomy. The removed appendix will then be acquired by MPF Z12 before the hospital disposes of it. In exceptional circumstances, MTF Z12 is authorized to remove the appendix themselves in a clandestine surgical van before delivering Class C amnestics to the patient. The appendix is then delivered to the Foundation employee, who is instructed to consume it in a manner of their choosing. Addendum 6180H1 Nature of SCP-6183 For many years, it is assumed that SCP-6183 individuals did not have an antagonist and were not affected by the anomaly, instead having their own DNA in their appendix cells. However, in 2016, a Foundation employee embedded at the Columbia University Biology Department was made aware of relevant unpublished non-Foundation research. Subsequent Foundation testing of infants that had absorbed the twin in utero known as Vanishing Twin Syndrome, found they were invariably of SCP-6183 subtype. SCP-6183 individuals are displaying not their own DNA, but that of their identical twin that they have consumed. It is now accepted that the frequency of identical twins being one another's antagonist is approximately 650 million times higher than would be expected by random chance. Continuously observed ultrasounds revealed that the SCP-6183 contact event happens approximately 44 days post fertilization and consists of one twin aggressively breaking through the intertwin membrane, see attached image, and absorbing the other. Notably, SCP-6183 individuals do not display the mental benefits from appendix consumption listed in Addendum 6180A1 above.